Welcome to the introduction to basins building a project. This webinar is produced by EPA Region 4 Water Protection Division TMDL Development Section. The objective of today's webinar is to give you an overview of the basins framework, its purpose, show you how to create a project from selecting the area of the United States and then downloading specific coverages uh, to be used in your project. And then lastly, showing you how to add GIS information from other sources like ArcGIS. Basins is a plug-in to a tool called MapWindow. MapWindow is an open source free of charge GIS system. It's undergoing rapid development because it's being developed by many individuals across the United States and the world. It has a large user community. Basins itself was originally developed by EPA's Office of Water. It's currently maintained by EPA's Office of Science and Technology. And in the future, it will be developed and maintained by EPA's Office of Research and Development Laboratory located in Athens, Georgia. Basin provides us a free ge geographical information system. The neat thing about, uh, about Map Windows Basins is it gives us about 90% of the capabilities that ESRI's ArcGIS or ArcMap has. So it's a mapping tool, a spatial, a spatial analysis tool, a water it's capable of doing watershed characterizations and then downloading data from the web to be used in our analysis. It also has functionality for pre-processing for environmental models such as HSPF, SWAT, WASP, SWIM, P load, and Aquatox. So this webinar will take you step by step through creating a basins project. There'll be other webinars in the future to talk about other capabilities. Upon execution of basins, you're greeted with this welcome dialog box. From here, you can build a new project, view documentation, or open a previously created basins project. We're going to use the build new project, so we'll click on that link. Basins will load a HUC-8 coverage for the entire United States. It's from here that you can pick the individual HUC or a series of HUCs that you would like to build your project for. Our project today is going to be built on a HUC that's on the Georgia-Florida border. So I'm going to use the zooming feature to zoom in to that area. I'm going to click the left mouse button and draw a box. And that zooms us into the area. So now the hook that we're interested in is this one right here. So we have to use the selection tool to select it. So we're going to click select. We're going to come down in here right in the middle of this polygon and highlight it. And in the, uh, the build dialog box, it tells you what the hook 8 is and the name of it. If you need to do more than one huck at a time, you would hold the control key down with select and select the hucks that you want. So in this case, there's three hucks here. And it would build the project for this area. Well, we're only going to use it for this one huck here. And I know this is the one that we want. So I'm going to click the build feature. From here, Basins is going to want to know where you want to store your project at. Your pro Basins wants to store them in the basins directory under data and I create a subfolder for every one of my basins projects in this case this is going to be called liver, Little River and I will call my project Little River. This creates the project. Now the next thing it's asking for is what is the projection that you want to use for this project. And these are geographical projections so that it knows how to register stuff in, in space. If your organization uses a standard projection, you should go ahead and, and find it here. There's many different categories that you can select from. This is typically what I use in the southeastern United States. So I'm going to use my standard projection. What Basins is doing now is it's going out to the uh, EPA FTP site and it's downloading a set of core coverages for my hook. Now these core co coverages are are pre-packaged so this is not dynamic data where everything could be up to date. They are updated every so often but they don't necessarily represent the most uh, recent data. So once these the core coverages are downloaded at least it gives us a little bit of information about our our watershed or our hook that we're looking at. So the the blue lines here is actually the RF1 coverage of the stream network that's in here. So we can see we have a couple of major tributaries and we have a lake involved as well. Other things that are to here is we have uh, a coverage of the permit compliance or NPDES facilities in the area. And as I stated earlier, this is a, a uh, 
prepackaged set, so there could be facilities that are offline now or facilities that have been added, depending upon what's happening in this watershed. But just like in ArcGIS, you can access information for any one of these coverages. You just have to make sure that it is highlighted over in the legend. We can use this identify feature and we can highlight a discharge or one of the discharges here and we get some basic information in here like, well this is the information that's actually in the shape file, but there's the NPDES number. Or, or we actually could just hit this table and we would get the information for all of the different facilities that are in this particular coverage. Other things that are downloaded in this core data set is we have some basic information uh, from the USGS where there's bacteria stations, areas where NACWA studies have been conducted. We already talked about the REACH file one. We have political, we have urban areas, county names, county boundaries, EPA boundaries, state boundaries, uh, major roads, and then some basic information about ecoregions, land use index, uh, and soil types. But this is just a starting point in the building of this project because we do have the ability to bring in some data dynamically from the internet. And we use a function in, in basins which downloads this data, which can be found under the file menu, download data. Now the type of data that's available here are, we have prepackaged data, which, which may or may not be up to date. Um, I know that uh, headquarters tries to update the med station information, you know, every four or five years. But what we're interested in here is the National Hydrography Data Set Plus. This is going to be uh, the most recent version that's available. And we can either download all of it, and all of it includes a digital elevation map, catchments, which are basically sub-basins or areas based upon the digital elevation map where water is collected and it flows. And then we have the hydrography or the, or the flow paths or the stream network here. And unlike the reach file one, the the hydrography here goes all the way up to uh, to uh, very very small first order streams. So I'm just going to go ahead and download the catchments and the hydrography. And what it's doing now is it's going to the uh, USGS server to get this information, and then it's going to project it into our project, and then it's going to be available to us to to look at. Now, one of the things that you'll see is that uh, the colors aren't all that good. It's really, really hard to see the, the stream network. So we can change the colors by highlighting whichever feature in the legend, right mouse clicking and go into properties. And just go to the appearance tab and we can change the color. And I'm gonna just change mine to a more representative blue. So there's the stream network now in blue. I'm going to shut off some of this other stuff for right now so we just so it doesn't clutter the screen. So we can actually just let's let's just have a zoom in a little bit and see. And we can just see that the uh, reach file uh, one is a lot less refined than the NHD plus. So you should be using the NHD plus now. Okay, next we're going to download some more data. Um, in this case, now we're going to go and get where the USGS gauging stations are at. So we're going to go to File, Download Data. We're going to go to the station locations for the USGS. I'm going to click on Discharge, Download. And much like it did for the National Hydrography data set, it is now going to the NWIS server to find where or find out the stations that are in this huck. So let me just unclutter some of this. I'm going to shut off the permit compliance. I'm going to shut off the NHD plus. So each where we have a dot here, there's a USGS gauge. Just like we did for the flow lines, we could actually make the, uh, the uh, symbol a little bit bigger so we can see it. You actually can pick a different type of symbol for it if you want to. And now everywhere that there's a blue X, there's a USGS station. And we still, with this highlighted, we can use the identify to see what station it is is which and then we can go ahead and download the measured data for the complete period of record for these stations to do that we need to select the stations that we want if you want to select all of them you could just draw a box around the whole thing and it'll go and get all of them I'm just going to go and get I'm just going to go and get this station 
and I'm just holding the control key down as I select them. So I'm going to select these three stations and then I'm going to go over to file, download, and now you'll see that daily discharge is available. So I will click the download button. Now we have the choice of saving these files in an, indivi uh, an individual file for each gauge. We can build a new WDM file. We can add to an existing WDM file. The WDM file is typically used with HSPF. So I'm just going to use it as an individual file. There'll be later webinars that'll show you how to process this USGS data from within basins to be used for flow analysis or, or model use. So I'm going to say OK. And it's going out to the USGS server and it's downloading the time series of data. And now we have three files on our system that has the data. All right. The last coverage that we're going to download is going to be um, the national land cover data set. So we're, this will be the land uses for this area here. So we're going to go to File, Download Data. Now we're going to go down to the National Land Cover Data 2001. Hopefully in the not so distant future this will be updated to get the most recent 2006 of the land use. But this is currently what's available. I'll click Download and it's going out and downloading this data set. Now this one could take a little while because this is actually a, a graphics file that needs to be processed. Once it's completed and downloaded and it's projected into our project, it, we can now look at the different land use types that are in our subbasin. I'm going to click OK here. And this is a grid-based file. So now you can see in the legend over here that it's a specific color relates to a, a particular land use. So in our case here, the dark green is, is forest, uh, evergreens. Um, Blue is open water. The grayish blues are wetlands. And that that kind of can, oh. The last thing we want to do is I just want to show that you can add GIS files from other sources. It could be other basins projects or it could be an ArcGIS project. To add another shape file or another coverage to here. I'm going to just shut this off so we can see a little bit better. I'm going to use the, the add feature up here. And then I'm going to go browse to where my other GIS data is at. In this case, I'm going to go get some data from Florida. And I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to just add this shape file. Now it brings the shape file in. And if I hit activate, this is showing all of the water quality uh, monitoring stations in Florida in which there's data. So it's easy to bring in data from other sources and look at it here. I hope this webinar gives you enough information to create your own project. Please check back. There'll be additional webinars for basins for doing things like watershed characterization, building WASP input data sets, and many others.